Sugar Pine Lumber Company was an early 20th century logging operation and railroad in the Sierra Nevada. Unable to secure water rights to build a log flume, the company operated on the crookedest railroad ever built. They later developed the Minarets type locomotive, the largest and most powerful saddle tank locomotive ever built. The company was also a pioneer in the electrification of logging, where newly plentiful hydroelectric power replaced the widespread use of steam engines. The company founded two towns. They built Central Camp, a permanent logging camp with lavish amenities, and Pinedale, site of the company lumber mill. They operated two railroads, the Sugar Pine Railroad, which connected Central Camp to the Switching Yard in Bass Lake, and the Minarets and Western Railroad, a climb carrier that transported whole logs from the Sierra Nevada to the company lumber mill. Today, the Sugar Pine Lumber Company is remembered as one of the most spectacular boom and bust stories of the early logging industry. After an initial investment of $8 million in 1923, the company was setting new records for the state's annual lumber cut. But it quickly exhausted its timber holdings and went bankrupt in 1933. Burdened by the debt and excessive capital and operation expenses, it never turned to profit. The Sugar Pine Lummy Company, incorporated in July 1921 by Madeira Sugar Pine Company officials Arthur Fleming, John Hemphill, and Elmer Cox, and investor Robert Gillis. They acquired 50,000 acres of old growth mixed con conifer forest spanning eastward from the existing Madeira Sugar Pine Lumber Company operation to the gorge of the San Joaquin River. Fresno and the Madeira County competed to be the site of the new sawmill and railroad terminus to be built in the San Joaquin Valley among the Southern Pacific Line. Fresno won the bid, offering a section of land that became known as Pinedale. Fresno also offered $375,000 in cash that helped the company secure the railroad right of the way of the mountains. The Sugar Pine Lumber Company acquired the timber holdings along the upper San Joaquin River, but it could not acquire the underlying water rights from the San Joaquin Light and Power. This meant the company could not build a log flume to get the wood to the market. Instead, two standard gouged railroads were built connecting the sawmill with the lumber camp 63.27 miles away. Minarets and Western Railroad The Sugar Pine Lumber Company could not afford to build a single private railroad from the valley to the mountains. The distance covered more than 40 miles of private rangeland and ranchers could set any price they wanted. A workaround was consented to create a separate subsidiary company that was incorporated as a common carrier. This allowed the necessary right-of-way to be secured easily and inexpensive at a fixed price. The 43.45 mile right-of-way was negotiated for 175,000 paid full for the Fresno County location incentives. The railroad construction was financed by an initial company bond issue of 2.2 million. The Minarets and Western Railway connected with the Sugar Pine Railroad at the Wishon Switching Yards of Bass Lake. From there, the Minarets and Western Flat Cars were pulled up to a 10.82 mile standard gouge railroad to the central camp. The base of logging operations in the woods, the Sugar Pine Railroad Railway, was built as a consistent 4.5% grade that wound through a series of 62 20 degree curves. This required the Sugar Pine Railroad to run a different set of 2822 locomotives where the water is carried in tanks mounted on the engine to increase tractive power. Between Bass Lake and Central Camp, there are no places where the railroad grade is flat or opposite grade. This allowed for an easy descent. Loaded timber trains could coast all the way to the mill, requiring a locomotive only for braking. This requirement added several miles to the serpentine route. From Central Camp, 150 miles of logging railways were laid. 50 trestles were required to span the steep terrain. Trestles number 14 was the highest at 110 feet. Sugar Pine Railroad Company used custom built 282Ts, Mikado Engines, American Locomotive Company. The water tank sat over the boiler. 
This added more weight over the wheels for better adhesion on climbs. It also allowed the engine to run equally, both forward and backwards. From Bass Lake up to the central camp, because of the seat 4.5 grade, the Mikado engines could only pull 12 cars at once. This meant that three trips were required to get a full 35 car train up. Often this meant that trains ran overnight to keep ahead. The company added more similar specification Mikado locomotives as they began cutting further out the timber tracks. In 1927, Sugar Pine ordered a unique tank locomotive minaret engine after the nearby mountain peaks. It was the most powerful saddle tank locomotive ever made and 40% heavier than the Mikado engines. With two pony trucks, 10 drivers, and two trailer trucks, it could pull about 25 cars up the grade. The massive saddle tank locomotives proved to be overbuilt for the application in the woods. Lighter geared, share locomotives could negotiate sharper curves over lighter roadbeds with significant lower operating costs. While different locomotives were used, the Minarets and Western and Sugar Pine Logging Company shared the same 200 standard gouge flatbed cars. Six all steel flatbed moving cars would be used in the woods to transport electric logging company equipment. Each day, lumberjacks used flatbed cars to travel from central camp to more remote work sites. This arranged what was called the man train. Central camp was the Sugar Pine Lumber Company's base of logging operations supporting 500 people living together in the woods. This included single lumberjacks living in group dormities, lumberjacks, and their families living in detached cabins, as well as railroad and construction workers, cooks, teachers, doctors, and other seasonal support staff. Sparing little expense, it was the industry's finest, costliest, and most modern logging camp. The Fresno Republican covered the camp's grand opening in 1923, which stood in stark contrast to primitive woods camps, the Republican reported. Central camp the little capital of Sugar Pine Hills is hidden away in a grove of towering trees. Huge buildings have been erected that are substantial enough to stand for 75 years or more. Even in the trying weather that exists during the winter, when snow piles up from 6 to 8 feet high, two of the buildings have a fully as large as floor space as the Fresno Auditorium. From garage to hospital, this lumber city is the most modern of any in the world, the builders claim. To the visitor, the contention is substantiated when a tour of the city limits is made comforts and conveniences that would be found in the country's finest summer resorts are in the evidence everywhere. Built at a cost of 600000 the investment was elaborated for what was ultimately a transitory worksite. A hydraulic plant supplied the two towns with electricity or lighting and cooking. A large central boiler provided the living quarters with steam heat. Lumberjacks returned by train to central camp for the midway meal prepared for large cook staff.